three, two. Good evening. I now call to order the Equity Committee meeting with the Equity Advisory Council for Thursday, September 14th, 2023. This is Vice Chair Harvey filling in for Chair Dr. Savoy. In accordance with Board Policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. In order to efficiently conduct this meeting, committee and council members will state their names before speaking. Ms. Siebel, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, Ms. Drummond? Ms. Frempong? Present. Thank you. Ms. Lichter? Present. Thank you. Ms. Delosky? Present. Thank you. Dr. Savoy? And Ms. Harvey? Present. Thank, Thank you. you. Ms. Siebel, will you now please call the names of those staff members on the Equity Committee attending today's meeting? Yes. Mr. Handy? Present. Thank you. I don't believe we have any other staff on the call from the Equity Committee, but if there are, um, please state your name. Uh, Heather Denmeyer. Principal at 7th District Elementary School. Thank you. Thank you. And Ms. Siebel, will you please call the role of the Equity Advisory Council members participating in today's meeting? Yes. Elisa Alonso. John Bailey. Sharon Blake. Jackie Brewster. Present. Sharon Blake present. Oh, thank you. Jackie Brewster. Clifford Collins. Crystal Collins. Kamari Corbin Yates. Present. Thank you. Heather Denmeyer. Present. <laughs> Thank you. Marietta English. Michelle Feeney. Hello. Thank you. Sandy Gold Rains. Michael Grubbs. Octavia Guthrie. Javeen Harden. Kevin Jennings. Homer McCall. Marquetta McLean. Catherine Mullen. I am present, thank you. Thank you. Kristen Nielsen. Lisa Norton. Marlena Purcell. Corinne Peoples. Abir Shanawi. Makita Scott. Brian Schiffer. Donna Sibley. LaShawn Stitt. Lauren Tillman. Dorian Trusty. And Juliana Valencia Banks. Present. Thank you. And that's Thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
The first item of new business is the introduction of the new Equity Council co-chairs. And for that, I call on Mr. Doug Handy. All right, thank you, Ms. Harvey. Good afternoon to everyone. So I'm um, happy to announce we do have uh, three co-chairs for our advisory council for this school year. Uh, the co-chairs are uh, Makita Scott, who was co-chairing the advisory last year. She'll be returning as a co-chair, um, along with uh, Abir Ramadan Shanawi and Julia Juliana, excuse me, Juliana Valencia Banks. So um, as you heard from the role right now, we only have one of our co-chairs present. Uh, the other co-chairs uh, may be joining us shortly. I know there were some technical difficulties um, in their joining, uh, but we do have uh, Ms. Valencia Banks here with us this evening, and she will be facilitating the main part of our discussion today, which is around the Advisory Council's feedback on the Superintendent's Transition Team Report. And I see uh, Ms. Scott on camera, so it looks like uh, Ms. Scott has joined us. So we do have two of our co-chairs present, uh, Ms. Scott and Ms. Valencia Banks. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to uh, I think Ms. Valencia Banks. You ready to start? And then uh, Ms. Scott will also join the presentation. Uh, next slide, please. So actually, uh, Ms. Valencia Banks, I'll take this one and then I'll turn it over to you. So um, as uh, we're all aware, uh, the superintendent formed a transition team. Uh, that team did produce a report. Uh, the report is broken down into five focus areas, uh, teaching and learning, culture and climate, community engagement and communication, infrastructure and operations. So once the report was issued uh, as an advisory, we looked at the report and had individual members go through the report and make some notes and uh, really uh, make some uh, uh, feedback, provide some feedback on anything that resonated with them in the report. So at this time, I'm going to turn it over to our co-chairs to uh, share the feedback from the report. Uh, you'll see the feedback on the slide, and then uh, once we are done with the presentation, uh, we can make uh, time for any discussion around uh, what the uh, advisory council short has shared for feedback. So, um, Melissa, Ms. Valencia Banks, I'll turn it over to you to get started with our first, uh, first focus area. Thank you, Mr. Handy. Our first focus area was teaching and learning and the feedback we received around survey uh, to survey current practices of school principals to determine what level of support is currently being offered to teachers in their first five years. And we want to identify what resources are needed and align them to programs we already have in place and modify current support programs as needed. Additionally, provide consistent targeted and streamlined professional development through the school year by aligning teacher retention goals to PD activities and teacher support initiatives with other departments in the system, such as the new educator orientation, peer assistance, and review curriculum and instruction, equity and cultural proficiency, and aspiring leaders. Next slide, please. By identifying common goals for teacher retention based on the transition report and taking a multi-office approach to supporting our goals, a teacher retention program could be outlined to support cohorts of new teachers as well as teachers in their first three to five years. This could also include opportunities for professional advancement, building the pipeline for department chairs and teacher leaders, which is an area that the system must address. Next slide. Teaching and learning continued. What has been done to address the inequities in minoritized and disabled student experiences related to disproportionate suspensions and underrepresentation in advanced placement courses, magnet programs, and gifted and talented programs? Questions that arise Is there any evidence that previous and existing interventions have minimized these inequities? Will the school system monitor the proposed short and long-term recommendations during this school year to determine their effectiveness in achieving desired outcomes? Next slide. What is BCPS doing to bring in the right people and or organizations to provide professional development? 
how is DCPS ensuring that the topics for the PD are reflective of the needs of the school and community? What is the process to ensure implementation from what is being learned from the PD? Collaborate with historically black colleges and universities in recruiting teachers of color. Use mentors of color to use mentors of color to mentor and help retain teachers of color. Next slide, please. Our focus area two was around culture and climate. Consider designating one Wednesday each month as an asynchronous learning day. This concept would translate to approximately 10 days a year, still categorized as school days or remote learning days. This approach could offer students and staff a valuable mental health day, while enabling students to work on assignments independently without the constraints of real-time in-person class. Next slide. The prevalence of e-cigarette and vaping use, along with the emergence of other substance abuse issues among school-aged youth, youth is on the rise. A county school district in Ohio has initiated efforts to combat student vaping by developing vape detectors in school bathrooms. These detectors operate by identifying specific chemicals released during the vaping incident, including nicotine, propylenol, bicycle and vegetable glycerin. Next slide, please. BCPS should focus on prioritizing students' well-being by decreasing academic pressure and advocating for a more well-rounded educational approach. To address the need to increase the diversity in BCPS staff, human resources will create opportunities to develop increased methods of outreach to universities and community colleges. HR would extend our current teacher pipeline to other higher education venues with minoritized populations that reflect the makeup of our school system. Next slide, please. HR is currently working on grant proposals for homegrown teacher training programs in collaboration with the Baltimore County Government and Education Foundations to offer scholarships to university juniors and seniors who are considered considering the teaching profession. This would include a three-year commitment to BCPS. Deliver ongoing professional development on the restorative practices and connect with Dr. David Hornbeck's efforts in Maryland. Invest in the Cornell University's therapeutic crisis intervention for schools. Next slide. Focus area three, community engagement and communication. HR would assess current methods of communication to expand our reach to a more diverse population of candidates leveraging tools such as Handshake, LinkedIn, and in-person job fairs to reach a broader, diverse audience. Why do communication questionnaires respond indicate a lack of geographic diversity and participation? Community stakeholders, community stakeholder organizations could have provided the answers and the remedy to address this issue. Also, if the school system asked community stakeholders this question now, I believe you can get relevant answers, including suggestions for addressing this problem. Next slide, please. Instead of having BCPS create community sessions, could BCPS partner with community members to create an environment that is welcoming for those students who may be intimidated or do not have a good relationship with BCPS? If central office is to work on helping the community, what is provided to central office staff that will provide them with the real world insight into what communities are facing? Can central office staff? Central office staff are far removed from what is happening daily unless a need arises. Next slide. What accountability measures will ensure compliance post trainings? Will cultural competency and language access trainings be available to non teaching and front desk staff, custodial, cafeteria, security, etc.? 
What measures will be put in place to give families the ability to make complaints about discrimination, bullying, lack of language access? Expanded network of stakeholders to ensure representation across the various ethnic groups. Next slide. Our fourth focus area was infrastructure. Review HR effectiveness by ensuring the new enterprise resources planning system addresses the onboarding challenges we currently face post ransomware attack. We are in the process of doing this. A major focus on assessing the levels of efficiency of the onboarding process in terms of timeliness and communications is crucial. This should, be, this should include surveys of principals for feedback regarding clarity of process and procedures. Next slide. On our fifth area operations, there was no additional feedback. And I will turn it over to Mr. Handy. Okay, thank you, Ms. Valencia Banks. Uh, so just wanted to point out a few things about the um, the feedback we gathered. Uh, we do have two of uh, two high school students who are members of our advisor this year, and some of their feedback was reflected. It might have um, stood out to you um, and perhaps the detail that a student would, would be able to provide from their experience. But we are happy to bring their perspective into our advisory this year. Um, there was also a comment that we didn't have on a slide, but there was a comment around uh, who was invited to participate in the transition team. Uh, one of our members thought that uh, some of the, uh, I guess, more traditional stakeholders, if you will, uh, like representatives of the area advisory and some of the other um, advisory councils were not included as part of the transition team. Um, and they thought that was an oversight. Of, of the formation of the team. Uh, but that pretty much rounds out the feedback. Uh, I do want to return it back to Ms. Harvey to see if there um, are any questions from our committee members um, on what's been shared or any ideas on um, where we can go next based on the feedback and also was in the transition team report. Thank you, Mr. Handy. I'm going to open it up for discussion and questions. Um, so this is um, Jane Lichter. I may have missed the beginning. I mean, I was here, but maybe I didn't um, get the context. So these are the, the pieces from the transition team report, the recommendation, some of the recommendations, right? Correct? Yes, correct. Ms. Lichter. So what's the connection with the Equity Council? Were the Equity Council part of the transition team or we're we just bringing the reports um, recommendations to the Equity Council? Right, so it's more so the latter. Uh, so what the, the council wanted to do was provide um, their individual perspective um, on the report, knowing that that's okay. going to be, you know, a guide for some system operations and focal areas going forward. Okay, thank you. I just needed that little bit of background. You're welcome. Thank you. Ms. Dolowski? Um, good afternoon. Um, thank you. Um, first of all, I absolutely love the idea of the vape detectors in bathrooms. Um, you know, I know my daughter is in high school and she's experienced it, um, but it sounds like it really is a widespread problem and what a wonderful solution that would be. Um, also, I really like the idea of diversifying the mentors. I know that we're expanding the mentoring program. Um, with some of the speakers that have attended board meetings to share increased partnerships as well as from the partnership share um, fair, excuse me. It really sounds like the opportunity to expand the market and diversify mentors for students is really coming into play, which is really great to hear. Thank you. I cannot seem to find my raise hand button, so can I jump That's in? That's all right. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Great. Um, Catherine Mullen, a teacher at Dundalk High and chair of TABCO's Racial Justice Work Group. Um, I'm really glad to see um, the number of times the recruitment retention 
um, in support of teachers of color was, were mentioned. Um, what, what I'd like to submit is, I think I only heard accountability once or twice. And I also know that some of the feedback, um, some of the feedback mentions focusing on initiatives that already exist. And one of the things that I would like to see um, are really quantitative, quantitative measures um, in many of the areas to make sure um, the initiatives that we're going to build upon are actually achieving their goals especially as it relates to, again, the recruitment, support and retention of minority teachers. So I, I the feedback was wonderful. Um, and I appreciate the work of the team. I, I would like us to really be able to chart the progress that, that's being made. Thank you. Thank you for providing that feedback. Are there others? Hearing none, I will ask if there is any other information to be imparted by the Equity Council members or you, Mr. Handy, regarding next steps based on this feedback provided, uh, where the Equity Council might be headed next in terms of continuing this work. Yes, thank you, Ms. Harvey. And uh, we can go to the next slide. This really should just be the question slide that we were discussing. So as far as next steps, you know, understanding the purview of the board around uh, budget and policy, uh, there are some themes that I think uh, were stronger than others, or we saw some trends in our discussion. So we really just looked at this report as an advisory over you know, the past couple of weeks. I'd like to go back and find out, um, you know, with leadership of our co-chairs, where the energy is, uh, you know, the, the staffing piece does come up quite often in many discussions. Recruitment and retention, uh, making sure we have a di diverse staff. So looking at those things, we would like to come back to you all. We'll be back in November um, and have some, you know, some really actionable items around your purview that perhaps could inform budget. You know, we'll be in the budget season. Uh, there could be some policy implications as well. Um, I also want to point out that some of the comments um, around HR were from our HR representative on the council. So it also talked about what's being done by HR and we might be able to, um, you know, even uh, enhance what's being done based on um, what the advisory has to share and perhaps bringing back some items to you all again to consider for, for budget and policy. So next steps around this when we come back in November, uh, we will really be looking at, uh, you know, some some budget suggestions, if you will, based on uh, what the council can come up with. So that way we have something actionable. And I'm going to go back to, you know, even what um, Board Chair Lichter had pointed out around our purpose. We really were trying to share out with you all today, but I know we've talked about, um, you know, presenting items in a way that they are actionable for you all. Um, as committee members and board members. So in November, um, we'll have some more concrete uh, items for you, if you will, but definitely wanted to give you all a perspective from our council members this evening. Um, at this point, I uh, do want to turn it back over to the co-chairs, if that's OK, uh, um, Vice Chair Harvey, just to see if they have any comments. So we they have them all here uh, with us. So uh, Ms. Scott, uh, Ms. Ramanashanawi, Ms. Valencia Banks, would you all have anything to share before we uh, turn it back over to Ms. Harvey? Okay, so Ms. Ramadash and I said her mic is disabled and maybe Ms. Scott. So I don't know if, um, I don't know if Mr. Corns is able to help with that. Uh, they did arrive late, so. Uh, um, uh, Mr. Handy, give me one second. I need to promote. Uh, I did not see those individuals join late, so I need to promote them to uh, presenter. Okay, give me one sec. I'm yes, moving sir. through Thank them you. now. 
Okay, thank you. Um, while he's doing that, Ms. Valencia Banks, do you have anything you want to uh, share or comment on while we wait for technical support? That is done, sir. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you. Hi, this is Makita Scott. Can everybody hear me? Yes. And see me. Okay. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Korn. Um, yes, and um, thank you for uh, for hearing our report and the feedback from the committee um, for uh, the feedback to the committee from the advisory group. Um, as uh, Mr. Handy said, these are, you know, a collection of our suggestions and everything. One thing that I wanted to point out, it was touched on the issue with the suspension and um, it kind of talked a little bit about um, how to deal with that, the suspensions, but based on, and I would like the committee to really look at this and, and um, really take this in, based on the equity audit, the past two that were done, it shows that there are a disproportionate amount of suspensions in regards to students of color, students who are um, uh, have English as a second language, uh, predominantly, I believe the number was higher predominantly for boys, uh, boys of uh, black boys. And I feel that that is something that should be addressed, something that should be looked at more in depth. And this touched on it and I touched on it as well. But I would like the committee to look at some ways as far as um, ways that that, pra that um, sort of practice can be interrupted. Um, perhaps ways that the before suspensions are done, maybe they have to come to the office of the superintendent. Um, but I, that is something that I just wanted to point out and make sure that um, you were aware of. And that was one of the comments that I gave um, to to the report. So thank you. And um, if Ms. Beer had anything to say, I'm finished. Good evening, everyone. My apologies for being delayed. I was unable to log in. Um, one of the one of the pieces of feedback that we received, um, which I think is a very valid point um, with the transition team, and I'm just looking at my notes on my other screen, um, is the lack of having either a teacher advisory council or a lot of teacher input into the transition team, but also collecting data and listening a little bit more to teachers and their needs, um, especially teachers of color. We do talk a lot about teacher retention and teacher hiring of teachers of color, but we, we the, the feedback is to go beyond retaining them. What are we doing to also sustain them throughout the year and also to get more teacher feedback um, as opposed to just from administrators, but also from more parents as well who are stakeholders and how are we making it more accessible for parents, whether they are new Americans, whether they have children who are L students or not, language barriers or what have you, to um, in, 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 uh, to include that into um, some of the feedback. So I think a little bit more of the teacher um, feedback and maybe it was said that during Dan's, um, uh, when he was superintendent, there was a teacher advisory group and that was uh, canceled and that was taken away so that was something that was brought up if that was something that we can discuss or consider thank and just you to close out um the, the feedback from the equity council uh, one of the things that we did here is about the need to create authentic partnerships with the different ethnic uh, groups that are represented throughout the school system so um, making sure that we're not just thinking about ELL students as just being uh, from Latin American countries, but also thinking about all of the different diasporas that are present in our um, system and recognizing that there will be a need to do intentional outreach to some of these families that goes uh, beyond the traditional ways that we com communicate with uh, families. So thinking outside of the box to ensure that families and the students are engaged um, throughout the system. Thank you. Um, I'd like to comment on Dr. Stitt's um, question about staff becoming policy. I'm not sure whether I'm sure I mean in the past equity training has been something whether it's policy or not. I think the conversations that we need to move forward is what do we do with that training? 
people can be trained, but how are we a keeping holding people accountable? B ensuring that it's implemented in the correct fashion and how are we meeting people where they're at in their journey? Some people may be at the very beginning of their equity journey. Some people may be farther along. So how are we going to make sure that not only are it, even if this is policy, what are the um, pieces that are going to be put in place in order to make sure that the equity training is implemented, is um, used with fidelity, and we are also holding people accountable whether they have the training or not. So policy, I think, is a very good step, Dr. Stitt, but I think we also need to bring into accountability and who's going to be overlooking this. Where's the training going to come from? What specific pieces of equity do we need to have our teachers train on? Because again, with Baltimore County being such a large county, not every zone has maybe the same needs as everybody else. We also need to make sure that each zone is getting what they need for the equity. We know the equity versus equality um, concept as well. So I really agree with that. Measurable, of course, again, we wanna make sure that it's implemented and it's being used with fidelity. Thank you. Is there any additional feedback that that anyone would like to offer? Um, this is Sharon Blake. I'm on by telephone. And so I'd like to speak to um, two components around culture and climate, where we're talking about um, restorative practice Restorative practice presently exists in the schools. However, Dr. David Hornbeck, former state superintendent of Maryland Schools, actually has a program called Restorative Schools, and there's funding and professional development that can be provided so that teachers can deliver restorative practice in a very um, effective manner, which will help cut back on um, conflict, um, will also improve uh, relationships between students and the faculty as well. And then the other piece I'd like to speak to on the long-term investment in uh, culture and climate, the Cornell Therapeutic Crisis Intervention for Schools, that is clearly a budget item. However, it is a highly effective piece where it it is. It requires at least three years of commitment. Everyone on staff, from your custodial staff to your principal, must commit to be involved in this. And what it does, it will help change the lenses around uh, trauma and what students have gone through. And as the, the entire adult staff will be changing their lenses around this, the students are also receiving therapeutic treatment so that young people learn how to deal with the trauma they have faced. So it's, it works together and it creates a culture of learning. Again, reducing uh, all sorts of problems and disciplinary issues and suspensions in a school. It was highly effective in the school system, um, in New York school system. Thank you very much for that insight. Are there any other comments or is there any other feedback for the committee? This is Makita Scott. I have something, unless someone else who hasn't gone would like to speak. Go ahead, Ms. Scott. Thank you. Um, I guess my uh, question would be to the committee. Um, uh, as you are hearing what the equity advisory is suggesting and 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 what we are um, basically where our focus is. I mean, we've presented this and then also we've done another report. I would like to find out from the committee where you see this going or how you receive this information or what the committee, um, how you feel it can be interpreted into the work of the board or if you um, uh, see a pathway for that. So I'll go first. <laughs> I, I see uh, already in your recommendations a lot of alignment 
with the goals set by uh, Superintendent Rogers. I am particularly uh, interested in professional development uh, because we know that um, the caliber of our teachers impacts the learning of our students. And that when we talk about quote unquote tough schools, we see that there are disproportionate numbers of long term subs or new teachers. And so through an equity lens, I do believe that uh, professional development, uh, teacher retention, teacher training and teacher support are integral to the success of achieving the goal of a quality and equitable education for all kids. So for all of our students. So I do see a lot of alignment and it is a matter of looking at how the board can support the work and stay in our role of governance to make sure that um, everything is proceeding. Are there other board members? Uh, Chair Lichter. Um, I think a next step for me would be to the last meeting we had when your committee um, presented a very robust list of recommendations is and then tonight we just went over uh, another robust list of recommendations with the transition report. So one thing I also want to do is kind of look at, at the alignment and the comparison. Where is there overlap between what you brought to us um, recently and what the transition report is saying so that we're because that that overlap would also help prioritize a lot about where we need to start. Um, and then again, looking at what Dr. Yarbrough has planned for implementation in that transition plan, are there pieces missing from the recommendations you brought us? So that's why I asked that clarifying question, you know, a couple minutes ago, because I, I'm truly trying to still establish the purpose. Um, and now we have two kind of lists of recommendations. Um, yours are very equity driven, but there's equity throughout the other suggestions that you guys went over with us tonight. So my first piece for me I, is to kind of study both to look for that overlap to help us prioritize, especially as we go into budget season and really having that lens of how much are we using um, the recommendations and some of our decision making. Thank you for that. And if I could just um, Chair Lifter, my uh, question was you said um, identifying or you had said something as far as the purpose. Were you saying the purpose of the report or the? Um, no, just. What I had asked um, Mr. Haney at the beginning as far as the purpose of, of presenting that report to us, presenting the transition plans recommendations to us tonight, that that purpose. OK, great. Um, and I can just share I, the purpose as, as I see it is so that um, we can uh, ensure that we're sharing um, the uh, needs and the wants and the desires of the, of the community and that which is um, who is comprised of the equity advisory um, group that we are part of um, and making sure that with all things that are done, it's done through a lens of equity. And I know that's the underlying purpose of everything that we do. We have the policy equity 101. However, policy without action and suggestions and input is just that it's just policy. So, um, you know, we have a robust group of of our advisory group. We have uh, two wonderful co-chairs, Abir and Juliana, who just came on and um, iron, shark is iron. And um, that's why that that's why we're here and that's why we're bringing reports. So thank you. Thank you for that. Is there anyone else? Well, I appreciate all of the feedback that we've received and acknowledge the effort and the work that the council has taken to continue to help us get to a place of equity within BCPS. So we look forward to the continued not only conversations, but planning and strategy. The last item on the agenda is announcements. The next equity committee meeting will be held on Thursday, September 21st, 2023 at 4 p.m. And the next equity council uh, committee meeting, equity committee meeting with the equity council, excuse me, will be held on Thursday, November 9th, 2023 at 5 p.m. Is there any further business for this committee? 
Hearing none, the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you all for joining us and for your contribution.